What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and in this video we're going to be doing some more farming here at Overpower Level 8 with my Farming Zero. In the previous video we were farming a general loot source, which was the Snowman from the Marcus Saves Mercenary Day Headhunter DLC. We were able to get this E-Tech Sniper, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, without the community patch, it wouldn't be pretty awesome, but with the community patch, both e and Hyperion rifles in general got a boost, and this weapon ends up being pretty powerful, even though it doesn't really have a good accessory for us. After finding that weapon from the snowman, I came here to the Washburn Refinery, and we had a little fun with it. It's definitely a good weapon, but I would still love to get it in a better accessory. Since we also found some other items, including another e sniper, if we can take a look at that here, I believe it's a Vlad off somewhere, somewhere in here, here it is, we found this one as well, and then we also got a better stockpile relic than the one I had. So previously I was using this Blood of the Ancients here, which increased it by 85%, and I found this stockpile relic to take it up to 88%, which is a little bit better, and I feel like the... Um, additional launcher max ammo is a little bit better than max health because it's easier to health gate when your health is lower and that's usually what I'm doing when I'm stacking so I feel like this stockpile relic is a big improvement our biggest improvement that we got even though it's actually only a 3% ammo capacity improvement because I still want to replace this rifle eventually however farming the snowman which is a general loot source worked out really well for us and so I wanted to farm another general loot source and I figured we would just head to Oasis in order to get that done because there is a quest that we can pick up in Oasis that's going to allow us to farm another general loot source. This is another community patch change where they have made the Treasure of the Sands repeatable. So we're going to come here to Oasis so that we can pick up the quest. Then we'll, um, I guess we'll also be fighting No Beard likely because he respawns as well. I haven't been back to Oasis yet with the community patch, which is a little bit weird because this is my favorite DLC for a number of reasons, but obviously not the least of which is the gear. But beyond that, I also like the aesthetic and uh, the pirate atmosphere and everything else as well. I like a lot about this DLC. Looks like we're going to need to uh, change some of the gear we have on because we're obviously set up to boost this corrosive rifle right now and we're not going to fight too many corrosive vulnerable enemies here in the pirate dlc or i guess we do in the washburn refinery because that's part of the pirate dlc but outside of the washburn refinery we're primarily fighting humanoid enemies so we're going to get ready for that real quick by switching over to some fire weapons and we'll throw on a fire relic as well that'll help us out pretty well this is a skill build we'll be using in order to farm the treasure of the sands and so we'll go ahead and pick that up now there's a couple ways you can get to the Magnus Lighthouse. You can ride the sand skiff all the way there, or you can fast travel to it if you've already been there. Being that we've already been there and we're pretty close to the fast travel right now, I'm going to head back to the fast travel and go to um, the Magnus Lighthouse. That way we can get to enemies a little bit quicker instead of scooting around on the sand skiff. Now I do find scooting around on the sand skiff fun because I think these are some of the prettiest maps in the game. Like I said, this is my favorite DLC. So... With that in mind, um, maybe if we do this uh, quest multiple times next time, we'll drive out there just for that full atmospheric effect here. Um, there are ammo machines right here, so it makes sense that we should buy some ammo. Perfect. Now we'll head on into the wash, or excuse me, the Magnus Lighthouse. I'd assume we could see the Washburn Refinery from here somewhere. Maybe if we get a little bit further up here. So, is that supposed to be Oasis? I think that's Oasis. So, where is the Magnus Lighthouse? Or, not the Magnus Lighthouse, the Washburn Refinery. We're at the Magnus Lighthouse. I feel like we should be able to see it somewhere. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong direction. Either way, we should start seeing a bunch of enemies coming here. There are a number of situations like this in, um, oops, in this particular DLC where you come up on an ambush of enemies. I like whoever did the maps for this DLC because of that. Uh, both the Rush Yards and, you know, this map and some other ones as well have these situations where there are no enemies and then all of a sudden there are a lot of enemies. And uh, with that in mind, it can be pretty fun to fight some of these areas. Oh man, that guy with the landmines. I don't, I don't know too much about him because I usually blow him up pretty quickly. Um, and so... I don't know exactly how safe it is to leave him alive when you're using Sniper Zero. Couldn't see that guy through the purple there. 
All right, low on health. We'll try to uh, get some health back here. Oh, man. The dear friend might be the biggest buff in the community patch. I, I don't know. It's so much better now. And it got a relatively small buff, right? Um, it didn't get buffed that much. But, like, for me, it might be the biggest buff in the community patch. Other than E-Tech snipers. It's either going to be that or E-Tech snipers, I feel like. Because they're both, like, items I want now. Whereas beforehand, they were items I didn't care about. And so, that's, that's a huge improvement, certainly. All right. Might as well uh, use the deer friend while we throw kunai here. And you see, just the deer friend and kunai on a slagged enemy is enough to get your health back up. That, that's pretty boss. All right, we've got some more ambush-style enemies here. We'll go ahead and take them out as well. Wow. So I'm getting destroyed by something. I guess it's that guy up there. All right. Good stuff all the way around. There are some stalkers in here. I don't currently have any uh, slag, or not ex ex not slag, excuse me, but shock weaponry equipped. And I was going to say if there was a no rabid stalker, we would just run past these guys. But um, I'm finding that there is a rabid stalker, and so it may be necessary to kill them. Because I'm not sure exactly how far this guy will follow. Looks like they don't follow all the way up here. They all kind of got stuck at that one spot. So we can kind of just ignore them. That rabbit's probably offended. Whatever. We will leave him be. We'll take the more dangerous route here where we could potentially get blown off by someone throwing a grenade. Now, with this, they've also added a uh, manly man shield drop to one of the lieutenants, which I do actually want because I heard that it will stop Hyperius's Nova from damaging me, which sounds pretty awesome. And way easier to farm a Norfleet with. Oops, I accidentally did the uh, throw your decoy in a hard object there and, uh, you know, scare all the enemies away or make them forget about you, I guess, would be the better term there. Sometimes you can't avoid doing that. You just press deception in a time of peril and you weren't really looking where you were throwing your deception. I guess I threw it into these boxes here. So many well-designed maps here. I mean, just as an arena, this map is pretty fun because you get a wide variety of enemies here. The pirate DLC did a great job. The pirate DLC is the best DLC. Oh, I'm out of uh, grenades, so this will be a situation where we need our dear friend, and it worked out for us. Cool. So that guy must block his critical hits when he's, you know, doing his power up there or something because I was shooting him in his head, and he wasn't taking critical hit damage there for a moment, so... Interesting. I was just going to run back here and discover this Cult of the Vault symbol. <laughs> I was actually looking for ammo there. We could also go harass DJ Tanner. I guess he drops a sham now. So, might as well. I mean, we're here, you know. Might as well go harass him. He is a Full House reference. Full House, I mean, it's a show that I personally hated. And, you know, while I love my sister, my sister liked Full House. And, I don't know, that's something that never made any sense to me at all because it just seemed like a terrible show. And with this guy being named DJ Tanner, we might as well kill him. Just to kind of relieve some of that stress, if you will. Can't even see that guy through all of his green mess there. Shooting him with the wrong rifle here anyway. He'll die though. All right. Oh, that was DJ Tanner? Damn it. If he wasn't aggroed yet, I didn't mean to aggro him. Oops. All right. So he did drop a sham. It's a 79 percenter, too. That's not too bad. I'd put it on, but we'd lose our critical ascension. Oh, things work out, dude. Things really work out. Got a 79% sham there. 
That's not the best sham you can get. I think the best sham you can get is like an 84% or something. But, as far as my purposes, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, that's it's over twice as high as our Transformer. It's got a really low capacity, right? But it has an okay recharge rate or and recharge delay, so that's okay. We'll keep it. I'm happy about it. Um, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. We'll go ahead and run forward here. So I guess it's, you know, a 1 in 10 chance that it'll drop the sham every time. I don't know exactly how the parts are weighted on the sham, and I don't know my shield parts well enough to tell you, hey, this is Malawan parts or Vladoff parts or whatever it is. I just, I truly don't know. It would appear that this might be a Vladoff shield part here or just an absorb shield part because they both have that part, right? Whereas, like, for example, my Height of Terramorphous and Big Thumper both have this large cylinder that shoots out to the right. The Transformer and Sham both have this little handle on it, so that may just be part of an Absorb Shield. Beyond that, they look pretty similar, right? They both got this little antenna thing. They've got this flat deal here. Um, they have different left parts. I'm not sure if that's a battery or a capacitor or what it is there, but they're a little bit different. Regardless, we'll continue on up here. I guess I could put it on now that I've gotten rid of my critical ascension stacks. We'll see if it ends up killing us or if we end up just evading all bullets. We're a little bit low on ammo now. I'm going to look around just a little bit for some more ammo. I've already looked in that area though, so we won't look there. We should have looked in DJ Tanner's area a little bit better. I'm sure there were boxes down there that I completely ignored. Looks like there are a couple more boxes right here, though, and we're not going to ignore these ones because we're going to fight quite an ambush here in a minute. You can see that our quest objective is fight your way to the top. So this is another one of those scenarios where I feel like they've done a lot of good programming of enemy spawns in this DLC. Obviously, I like the layout in Washburn Refinery as well, um, if you hadn't guessed. And that's another area from this DLC. So this DLC is just the best <laughs> period it's the best dlc all right we'll go ahead and get rid of some of these more more guys here i know that um you know a lot of people think that tiny tina's dlc is the best dlc and it's not a bad choice it's a good dlc don't get me wrong but with that in mind this is a better dlc for me it added more zero specific gear <laughs> which I love and it came out way earlier too, right? This DLC Kept a lot of people playing Borderlands 2 when they had started to move away from it because they had beat True Vault Hunter mode and the warrior too quickly true Vault Hunter mode was Way too easy. Um, I've mentioned that before. I think it negatively hurt the perception of Borderlands 2 at the start of this It actually really did hurt the perception of Borderlands 1 and they tried to fix that uh, You know in Borderlands 1 by making a second playthrough and adding more levels and all of that, you know um, But it still just wasn't quite enough. I Don't know if they added another playthrough in Borderlands 2. I think it always had two playthroughs I could be wrong on that they definitely added a higher level cap, at least a couple times though, in order to try to make the game harder. And that is one of the things they said they were trying to do as far as a um, design choice. Oh my god, that buccaneer jumped right in front of my freaking grenade, dude. Um, when I was trying to slag this guy. Oh well. Um, that ended up killing me. So, this is the super badass pirate, meaning we're getting pretty close to the end of these spawns. But like I said, when they were designing Borderlands 2, one of the things I remember at least one Gearbox employee or spokesperson saying is that, you know, they did get, ah, oh, come on, Sham, they did get complaints that Borderlands 1 was too easy and so they wanted to add a little bit more difficulty to Borderlands 2. Now, I'm not saying the game should be crushingly difficult or anything, but it does need to at least provide a challenge to the player that makes them want better gear. That is kind of the integral part of Borderlands, right? Um, and so, if the game's not hard enough to actually require decent gear, then all of your decent gear feels a lot less special. You know what I mean? Um, like, if you don't need the gear in order to kill enemies, like, if a sham doesn't help you survive more than an average absorb shield because the enemies simply don't provide enough challenge, then that really takes a lot of the cool factor away from the sham. Since the enemies are actually capable of killing the player, the sham is a pretty cool item because in a lot of situations, it'll help the player survive where they otherwise wouldn't. So that's kind of neat. 
We'll go ahead and ride this up now. I'm not sure if any more enemies will spawn down here. What I do know is that I am completely out of grenades. So when I get up to the top of the lighthouse, I'll have to get more grenades. If I didn't know what was up here, I might jump off this platform and get more grenades before we go up here. But there is some sort of invisible death barrier that keeps you from jumping from the top to the lower portion. So I wouldn't want to jump off this right now in case it might kill me. But what I was going to say is when I get up here, I know that there are no enemies until I actually go to the lighthouse. And so we'll be able to use this time in order to make sure that we have enough grenades for the impending fight. The grenades are obviously what I recover health with most of the time. Obviously, we use Innervate and, I guess, Fearless with the community patch. And we can also use the Dear Friend in order to get some extra health back that way. Being a Moxie rifle, it gives you life steal, which is hugely important. I have a mod that takes away its French name and gives it the dear friend name, which I do appreciate. So we'll head up here and take out, or not take out, we'll head up here and put in the compass, I believe, and then we will come outside and take out all of the lieutenants and stuff. Now, one of the lieutenants may indeed drop the Captain Blade's Manly Man shield, which is something that I do want because if we are able to find that, then we can potentially take out Hyperius a little bit easier. There's also kind of a cool sniper perch right there. I kind of want to use it. But I'm not sure if any of the dudes that, you know, spawn down below will actually spawn down below if I don't jump down all the way. I'm not entirely certain. So the compass is there. Let's go ahead and activate it. Got a sniper here. We'll pick it up for ammo. Alright, so now we got a rendezvous with Scarlet. Ooh, we got another Maggie here, but it's Bandit Grip and it's Accuracy Accessory. So if it was Jacob's Grip and Accuracy Accessory, it might be kind of dope because it would make the spread tighter. But with it being a Bandit Grip, I'm not super stoked on it. Alright. Oh, I can't. Can I snot? Oh, I, I did stop on the sniper perch. So this is cool. I really wish I could fight them from up here. I wish they would spawn in because I think it would be kind of cute to shoot them from up here, but we have to jump down a little bit further. So pretty quickly, they're going to spawn in all these bros, I would imagine. All right, so this is apparently where we die, which is not good. And we will die if we keep getting beat up by these mercenaries. Go with some boar action on them there. Make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Man, he does his timed roll. Like, I don't know if, he, if it triggers based on your ADS. That would be some interesting programming there, but that's what it seemed like. Every time I would aim down sights, that's when he'd do his combat roll. That's pretty impressive, really, and it makes him a lot harder to take out. All right. I don't like how they can hold their elbow up in front of their head and block a critical hit, though. That seems like it would blow through your elbow and go straight into your head and still cause a critical hit. So that's a little bit of a shame when that happens, but I do understand why it happens. So that was the guy with the corrosive gun, which always makes him a priority. See what I mean about that guy's elbow blocking his head? Like, he still took damage from that shot. It just happened to be a non-critical hit, even though it was in his head area. He had an elbow blocking it. That's very weird to me. So this guy, Lieutenant White or Lieutenant Other One, they might be the guys who actually drop the um, Lieutenant Hoffman, who actually dropped the Manly Man Shield. We'll check that out here in just a second. I think one drops the Manly Man Shield and one drops the Idol. So the Idol, you know, is a much better relic now with the community patch, but not something I'm truly looking for, to be honest with you. So 24.4 on the idol relic, and then we got the Midnight Star. So maybe it's not the Manly Man Shield that they can drop. Huh. I thought it was. Regardless, we'll move forward. I guess we could theoretically get a Greed here, too. Come on, Jacob's Grip, Dastardly uh, Accessory. That's what I want, is a Dastardly Greed. That would be awesome. Add it to my Jacob's Collection. Alright, so now where we need to go is right here in Wormwater. Cool. Hm, can't see the Magnus Lighthouse from right here either. 
Where is the catch a boat? I think it's down here. Yeah, catch a ride. They don't even call it catch a boat. So, straight on to the beacon. We'll be able to see the Washburn Refinery once we get around this corner, I bet. I think that a lot of the uh, maps being like visible from other maps, I think that that is a very cool feature that adds to the coolness of this DLC. So we'll get swallowed up by this big old worm here. You can see how long this quest takes. I understand that, you know, Gearbox wanted people to loot other sources as well and stuff, but there are better ways to do that or encourage looting other sources than making this a limited run. I feel like with this being a DLC, like people paid $10 for this DLC, right? Um, at least when it first came out. And so with that in mind, I don't see why it's a bad thing for them to be able to run this quest multiple times. This quest takes quite a while to do, right? You have to run through that whole Magnus Lighthouse section. You have to drop down here, fight Scarlet, then fight the Leviathan, and then get all the way up to the chest. So if you're farming for a specific item, like say a Sham, you might want to farm a specific enemy um, for that instead. Sham's kind of a bad example, actually, because um, it's easier to farm from DJ Tanner than it is to farm from the actual uh, bunker. But eh, say if you wanted to farm a Lyuta, right? Try to keep my health up with this here for a second here until this corrosive dot wears off if I can. Gonna get destroyed by this rack hive here named Roscoe. Go ahead and uh, finish Roscoe off with the Pimpernel. Perfect. Does she drop the greed 100% of the time? She might drop the greed 100% of the time. So it's over there. So there aren't very many 100% drops in Borderlands 2. And for some items, I feel like that's a little bit weird. I know I mentioned that as being weird with the stink pot from No Beard, but it is a little bit weird with the greed as well. Or it would be a little bit weird if the greed didn't do it, especially since they made Captain Scarlet a limited spawn. So I guess you only really get two chances at a greed per playthrough. I would rather just have a respawnable enemy, I guess. And that's eventually what the community patch enabled, so that's pretty awesome. So that greed there, I believe it had the Hyperion grip and no accessory, which I don't appreciate, you know. Um, that's not any good at all. Uh, that's a bummer, man. The greed is a cool weapon. It's an incendiary Jacob's pistol. Um, but with the bad grip and no accessory there, I'm not really interested in it. We'll go ahead and continue. On to the treasure of the sands. Oh, man. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I can tell you that my arm is completely dead at the moment. My right arm, too. Um, that's my mouse and arm. <laughs> um, over the weekend, uh, I did this thing. They call it sporting clays. And it's put on by the fishing game out here in my city and stuff. And it's pretty cool. You know, there were like 10 stations and then you shoot um, shotguns at them, basically. Uh, where the, they have these clay pigeons coming up. And so 10 stations, five sets of two shell or two clays each. It gives you 100 total um, shotgun shells that you need to fire, basically. In case you're curious, I ended up going about 78 out of 100. Some of the stations had like really troubling presentations for me that were hard for me to track with my shotgun and such. But um, it's very possible to hit closer to 100. And I think one guy actually got in the 90s, which is really impressive. Either way, though. You're still firing a hundred rounds of 12 gauge shotgun shells. And I was shooting one and one eighth shot because I took out a semi-auto shotgun, which requires me to use, you know, something a little bit heavier than seven eighths shot, which I think a lot of people were using um, the seven eighths ounce loads just because they're a little bit easier on the shoulder and everything. In fact, some of the older guys that I was with straight up admitted that's why they were using the lighter loads. Made it a little bit harder to aim because you get less, um, you get less, you know, pellets out there, I guess. You would have a lower number of pellet count if it was Borderlands 2, but it's easier on your shoulder to shoot, less fatigue. 
Regardless, I wasn't feeling that bad after the first hundred rounds of shotgun shells, so I went back and did it again. Bought a membership to the range, you know, and went out there and did it myself. I think I scored slightly better, got like two more uh, birds or whatever, but um, at the same time, 200 rounds of 12 gauge on my shoulder has made my arm very, very sore. <laughs> that happens sometimes though. Go ahead and uh, bore these to death here. I'm not exactly sure what the best way to take this guy out is. I think um, we eventually need to bust all of these little eyes he has here. So I'm going to aim for this chest one just a little bit more so that hopefully he'll start sticking that tongue one out more frequently. Either way, though, I am out of ammo, so we're going to run over here and grab some ammo. Maybe we'll put on our lucrative opportunity relic if we get in too big a trouble here. Now, this is not my favorite type of boss. I think I've mentioned that before, but I do not like bosses that have you fight their ads while they go into like some sort of waiting mode. I've never really enjoyed that. It's been a constant, you know, video game design since video games were created and such, but at the same time, it's just not my favorite. Shooting him at that heart spot there, eventually I think he will burst. We've almost got him almost all the way dead there, and his uh, heart spot finally did burst. So now it's probably going to be tongue spot a bunch, and with that in mind, we can get ready for that. Ooh, I really don't like these guys. So I'll try to get a critical hit here with my dear friend. That way I get up with my second win with full health. But it didn't matter at all because these guys just immediately applied multiple corrosive damage over times to me and put me in a fight for my life again, which is never good. So I think we eventually kill these and get to a sandworm queen, and that's when he'll stick his tongue out and allow us to fight him. At least that's what I think. Got a good bore on those guys there. That's always a good thing. This is the queen, so I figured I'd just go ahead and try to take her out a little bit quicker. Um, looks like there's another queen right here. Huh. Couldn't hit her critical hit when she was doing her venom spray, which is tremendously disappointing, but not a big deal. We're a little bit low on ammo, but now we're not, so that's good as well. So I guess they offer you more sandworms as a second wind opportunity once he's uh, out doing the tongue display, which kind of makes sense. We'll go ahead and finish him off here. If the game will let me, perfect. And it does kill, no, it does not kill the sandworms. See, that's another thing I really don't like about these type of bosses, is that sometimes when you kill the boss, their minis stay alive. And that is not a good thing at all, because Dying after you have killed the boss is a tremendously disappointing feeling. It does not feel good at all. So, meh. There's probably an easier way to kill the Leviathan, but with that in mind, I haven't run the Treasure of the Sands that many times. Like, pretty much just the times that I've played through during the story, because it's a lengthy quest. I always thought that there were easier ways to farm for specific gear. And so this is, like I said, kind of a general loot farming. It's not... You can't farm for a specific item from this, unless you're farming for a sham, which is on the way. <laughs> and we did farm for that sham, so that's good stuff. All right, so we're in here. We still have to climb all the way to the top of this, which does take some time. So I'm going to head over here to where there's a bridge, and then we'll head up there. I guess we could have grenade jumped up there, and I guess that's kind of what Gearbox encourages you to do by not leaving that uh, first bridge there, so that if any any people in your party know how to grenade jump, they'll have a little bit uh, quicker access to the gear, assuming that they do it right. Which I think is kind of funny, right? But uh, it does come into the whole debate as to whether there should be shared or instant loot, instanced loot in um, co-op Borderlands 2. Instance loot would be what a lot of MMOs do, where every player who is playing it sees different loot drops on their client. That way someone cannot steal your loot. And I guess that does make sense when there is PvP. Borderlands 2 does not have PvP. Interesting. Got a legendary class mod over there. We'll check it out. Um, and so with that in mind, I feel like a lot of people are less inclined to steal loot from one another than they would otherwise be. But it's another reason to... You know, play with good people and stuff. 
obviously a lot of gear is better on some characters than other characters and so perhaps your group can decide who gets what piece of gear and i kind of like having the same loot drops for everybody so we got a legendary hunter com here it's 42 37 23 let's check out the legendary hunter we already have no the one we have is just straight out better so we will leave that one be we didn't find anything up here quite yet so that's kind of a bummer to be honest with you but oh well so obviously this can drop legendaries but i don't think it can drop like any legendaries with uh increased rarity i'm not so sure about that there is one more secret chest down here and we'll check it out jump down one levels too many and we'll run back up here and check it out now ah the secret chest maybe this will have what we need had a proficiency relic a vitality relic and an smg so not very good there if we save quit i think it will get us pretty close to where we can go turn this quest in Huh. Maybe not. I was hoping that it would. I don't imagine Roscoe respawns, so we don't get another chance at agreed. We'll move forward here. Wonder, obviously, I think Borderlands 3 will obviously be, um, you know, in the future, set with you know post the events of borderlands 2 basically but i wouldn't mind playing captain blade as a vault hunter in a borderlands prequel i guess he's you know a little bit older than the others as far as his age and stuff because it seems like he was an adult a long time ago and captain scarlet is just now finding his memoirs and such so does this mean i would be able to just run straight into the treasure of the sands again or am i locked out of here i don't know I'm going to get out of here because I want to go turn the quest in without fighting that bro again. Okay. So now we can get on out of here, which is good. Oh, look. He's already dead. Weird. All right. Make sure we stock up on ammo because we have run low a few times. We'll do this run one more time here. I'm not exactly sure... If you get a legendary every time you go up there, obviously we got a legendary class mod that I already had this time, which isn't so hot to be honest with you, um, but we'll go again. I mean, so far we've got a sham, and so the sham is good. But still. Ah, there's a no beard because we quit out. Man, his stink pot hits hard, dude kill him before he charges me here Ooh, we did get a stink pot it's a horse stink pot which is going to be the anti-recoil version i believe that's a tort grip i don't know my ar grips very well but i think that is a tort grip so we'll leave that be cool to get it to drop though that would be without the community patch i would say one of the harder items to farm right um because you only get it one chance at it per playthrough really which is kind of crazy. So this just gives us EXP, which is obviously useless at our level, and extra money. So, I don't know if we want to run that one again. Let's run it one more time and scoot on out there, just because I enjoy the scooting. I guess it's not technically a scooter, but it's pretty cool. It's, they call it a skiff. And we'll get to look around in this DLC for just a minute. And I think this DLC has some of the prettiest aesthetic out of all of them. All right, let's check, take a look at this. I think it does have the prettiest aesthetic. So this is Feral. I think that's Tor Grip, not Doll Grip. If that was Doll Grip, that might be worth purchasing. Are there any of these that might be Doll Grip? So I'm pretty sure that's Jacob's. I'm pretty sure that's Jacob's. I think that's Torg. If that's Doll Grip, I'm going to feel bad because Feral is a decent prefix for the weapon. Um, it lowers accuracy, adds damage, and fire rate. Maybe I would probably just want the one that just increases base damage instead of the one that lowers its accuracy significantly. I'm not entirely certain. Either way, though, he didn't have much for us, so we'll move on. 
Oh, I do love this DLC, man. <laughs> There's so much cool stuff in it. Um, I am going to have to eventually farm for a manly man shield. So with that in mind, um, we may be killing some more enemies. I thought it was one of these lieutenants from reading the patch notes, but I'm not entirely certain on that. Okay, so Magnus Lighthouse is this way. I think there will be one more ambush party if we actually go into Magnus Lighthouse this way instead of fast traveling there. But this does give us, you know, a cool feel that we are in a deserted ocean here that is dried up and that, you know, there are a bunch of pirates still around. I like this. This is a very cool DLC. I feel like they did the best job with the atmosphere on this DLC, even though they did a wonderful job with the atmosphere in the um, fourth DLC, Tiny Tina's Attack on Dragon Keep. The only DLC where I feel like they really did a poor job with the atmosphere is Torg's DLC. Um, and that's mainly because they went out of their way to describe this awesome tournament. You know, the badass leaderboard and stuff like that. And then your actual ascent up the badass leaderboard is so very disappointing to me. Like, there are a couple bosses that you don't even get to fight, right? Um, and, and instead you just fight Piston's Blimp instead of Flyboy. That ruined the atmosphere in that DLC to me, to an extent. I, you know, I still enjoy the DLC overall, but I feel like it is the worst DLC in Borderlands 2 for design decisions like that. And then also, driving around in a circle doesn't seem like it would be something that would make anybody on the badass leader board uh, care about you at all. And so, th doing that to get Motor Mama's attention, I found was weird as well. Like, maybe you could have used the vehicle in a certain way, like stopped a shipment of babies to her or something. That would have been a cooler way to do that, right? They do mention that she is a cannibal who eats babies, sometimes her own young. But if she was having, like, a selection of orphans imported to her in order to uh, eat, and then you stopped that, that might be something that would make Motor Mama mad enough to fight you. And it would have been funnier and more fun to do and stuff as well, so... Missed opportunity on that part, I'd imagine. This is kind of cool. You could jump your vehicle off of this, I guess, if you're exiting the Magnus Lighthouse from the travel gate instead of the fast travel. You could do it that way. But I think most people probably fast travel out of there, especially since, you know, most of the times you're going up there, you are doing the quest here for the Treasure of the Sands, and you'll probably want to fast travel quickly. I don't know. We'll head in here and fight these guys again. I did save quit um, after we killed the Leviathan and looted the treasures the first time. So all of these enemies should have respawned when I quit out, which means we'll get another chance at a sham shield, which is pretty cool. Potentially, we could also get a manly man shield, assuming those lieutenants up there actually drop it. I thought I read that they did. Maybe they dropped multiple Captain Blade items. I'm not entirely certain. That would indicate a little bit that um, Captain Scarlet's most trusted members are doing a bit of a mutiny on her by stealing gear that I assume she was looking for, right? She's kind of a Captain Blade obsessed individual, so I'd assume she'd want his gear, and they were just hiding some of it from her. Her top dudes, that's not good. We'll continue to uh, have fun with the shooting gallery here. Make sure none of these enemies are spawning with weapons that are too offensive. This guy's got a Torg AR. He's not accurate with it, but he did finally hit me there, so good stuff. Looks like my sham saved my life. That's good. We should have used a different shield against um, <laughs> against the Leviathan, now that I think about it. Um, but whatever. Oh, no. I was saying the sham was keeping me alive so well. Oh, well. Stupid sham. Didn't block that one bullet. That's why we need an 84%, man. The 84% would have blocked that one. I'm not so sure about that. Um, I should not take as much damage to these uh, sappers as I was either. Go ahead and finish that guy off. Little shotgunner here. I found that these enemies were a little bit interesting because they knocked themselves over. And it makes them really hard to uh, hit if they actually have a single shot uh, Jacob shotgun or something. Because then they fall over every other time you hit them. And um, or every other time they try to hit you at least. And so that makes it a little bit difficult to hit a critical hit on them. Which is kind of funny. 
it turns what is usually a disadvantage having a you know shallow mag shotgun into something that actually helps the enemy so that's kind of cool and it is an interesting little piece of code there i like that cool we'll kill at least one of those in order to gain a follow-through bonus here I wonder why the Leviathan cares so much about its treasure. I guess that's never really explained, right? Um, and that's the case for like a lot of dragons and stuff that guard gold too. They never really tell you why. It's just part of their innate character. Alright, so we're low on ammo here. Um, we did gain a follow through bonus, I guess, from damage over time, which is cool. I also kind of like that these guys main... Uh, main directive here is more water <laughs> it makes sense you know because they're in a uh absolute desert here and i guess even if there was you know like water and it was seawater these guys could still be looking for fresh water drinking water so that's kind of cool make sure and avoid this guy's uh long range heavy attacks here catch this that's a funny thing to say when you throw a grenade all right we're moving forward here and we're going to take out whatever's still here i'd love to carry some of this critical ascension into the ambush room but with these guys spawning it may be a little bit harder to do that because they're a little bit harder to get critical hits on no biggie avoid that big old mine there so there sounds like there's one guy behind us, too. We'll go ahead and try to get a critical hit on him. Perfect. Now we'll have a little bit of ammo and a little bit of critical ascension by the time we get to the ambush room here. I'm going to waste a couple of critical ascension stacks for a little bit more ammo. I think it's probably prudent. Wow, that ammo box was definitely not worth it. So I'm going to ignore this one as well so that we don't tick down too far. Oh, I need to activate the lift, too. So we're going to have, like less than 10 critical ascension to start this fight that's my my mistake there we should have had more than that <laughs> that guy got blown up by my grenade all right man that guy is doing some sort of weird like spinny thing making his head real hard to hit he's like lining up incorrectly with this anchor man somehow all right slag the anchor man So that guy's going to appear right by me, if I had to guess. Yeah. And so with the sham shield, he's even more effective than he otherwise is because our shield has such a small capacity. Cool. So we'll continue to take out these dudes. Um, I just know that I'm low on ammo, so I need to proceed in here a little bit quicker. Let that guy blow himself up. Nice, we were able to get a one-shot, one-kill on that guy out of deception, but then I blew myself up on his uh, extra stuff there. Hopefully the sham will keep me um, nice and pumped up until my transfusion trails get here. Blow up that guy as well. Perfect. Whoa, there must be multiple anchormans around or something. Deep Sea Whalers, excuse me. I was going to say, that guy's hard to hit a critical hit on. Even the bigger ones are hard to hit a critical hit on. Nice spread on the Lyuta there. Always a good thing. All right. Just a few more dudes to take out, and then we can go upstairs. It'd be kind of cool if they made the uh, thing come down at a rate that was constant with how you how quickly you were killing the enemies, but I think it's probably just based on time, if I had to guess. We have a rather ridiculous amount of critical ascension at this point. It will kill enemies very, very quickly, which is good. Okay. There we go. I really wanted to kill this guy with the shock pimpernel before his damage over time killed me, but somehow he didn't even uh, get slagged, which is crazy. 
And then that guy constantly slamming me while I was in fight for my life was making it harder to aim. So they were almost successful in killing me, which was irritating, but whatever. <laughs> I don't like those situations that adjust your aim. Um, maybe they can do that when you're not in fight for your life, but throwing off your aim when you're in fight for your life, where your aim is already like constantly sinking, that's just a feature that is kind of unfun. But we still worked through it, and we're still going to go up here and loot this lighthouse one more time. There are two chests up there. I guess it's looting the lighthouse, but we're really setting up for bigger looting down there at the Leviathan. I'm getting a little bit tired of wearing the sham just because physical damage is so brutal. I feel like I stand a better chance with the antagonist, so that's what we're going to put on instead. Always a good thing to have the, the choice. If we were fighting strictly gun enemies, maybe the sham would be a superior choice, but since we are fighting the um, other enemies as well, especially those anchormen and other things that obliterate the sham's capacity in one physical attack, which the sham cannot defend against, um, it's going to be something where the sham is not that effective. Whatever, we'll ride this up here. I wish they made it so that if you stood on the sniper perch, wherever it happens to be, that the enemies would spawn, because that would be a cool way to fight them if you could stand on one of these perches, specifically this perch, and actually fight the enemies. Oops, I did not mean to jump down there. Luckily, there's no fall damage in Borderlands 2. Unfortunately, that means we have to wait for that thing to get all the way to the top and then come all the way down. There is crush damage in Borderlands 2, and I would imagine that if I stood here, it would kill me. So I'm not going to stand there. I'm going to run under it, though. Is it going to kill me? No, not quite. Alright. This time I won't jump off the elevator here, trying to look at one of the sniper platforms or perches, I was calling them. There are a couple that are kind of cool, and it would be nice to be able to stand up here and snipe them from that, but they simply don't spawn in until you get close enough, so meh. All right. So we'll place Blade's Compass, then we'll activate it again. All right, got a blue one here. We'll jump off from the top. Top notch, my friend. And don't worry, I still need your help to get past whatever trap they might be. Just kidding. It's honestly been a lot. I'll try to kill these guys before they teleport away, if I can. Cool. Built up a little bit of critical ascension off them, handled them much better this time than we did the previous time. So that's good stuff. Part of that is probably the larger shield, if I had to guess. Oh, I didn't kill DJ Tanner this time. Oops. That was a mistake. Ah, the light is spread, helping my bad aim there. Love that gun. He's got a booster shield on. Now... Got another Ido relic here, and I don't think we got anything else. Obviously, there's that shield booster, which is kind of cool. There is some da or ammo there via this sniper rifle that we could pick up. I'll go ahead and pick it up. We will follow the beacon, but I am going to kill DJ Tanner one more time just because he's out there and he needs to die, man. I don't know how quickly I can jump off this thing. This may kill me. It may not. It may. It didn't. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, I don't think we can get to DJ Tanner from here. I think we'll have to walk it all the way back. Oh, no. We really can't get to DJ Tanner from here because... Oh, interesting. We can't get back on this... I guess you'd call it a pier, so that's not any good. Can we get down here this way? I think we can. It would probably be safer to grenade jump it. Oh god, it would be way safer to grenade jump it because there's like some invisible wall right there. That's aggravating. 
This should allow us to jump off. Can we stand here on this part? I don't know. What, standing where is better. And we made the jump. I was being too cautious about it. Looks like there's a rabid stalker here and some other stalker friends for us. But there is also the ladder of safety. And if we take the ladder of safety, we'll be able to get to DJ Tanner without a rabid killing me, I would imagine. He's going to throw pins at me, but meh. All right. Cool. So I don't know what they were mining in here, but they obviously had some sort of mine cart. And be a little bit worried about mining something that has such verticality to it. It seems like you could easily compromise the structural integrity of the landmass here and cause it to fall. I'm not entirely certain about that, though. Let's see what we got. No good grenades. Meh. That is one thing about having as much good gear as I do now, is that most gear I find is going to be worse than the gear we already have. Example, if we find another sham here, it may be worse than the 79% one that I already have. Being that the sham, I think, is only a 10% drop, I would imagine that we very likely do not find another sham here. It seems like it'd be about a 1 in... Oh, we found Mr. Bubbles, though. About a one in a hundred percent, uh, one in one hundred chance to get two in a row to drop, which would be pretty rare. Killed that guy with the wrong rifle. I like that the dear friend is plenty powerful enough to actually get one shot, one kills, and deception. That's good stuff. Begin to uh, build up critical ascension here on some of these guys, which is good. Might need to slag Tanner. He's got more health than an average enemy. He reminds me of Roof in some ways, which is scary because Roof has given me more trouble than most enemies ever will. All right, no sham that time. Stupid antagonist, dude. I got to make the antagonist so that the ball is shootable or pass-throughable. I don't know what the word for that would be. Permeable? I think that's the word for pass-throughable. <laughs> they do make an actual word for that. That's good. The developers of the English language did a good job. Needs a new patch, though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's go up here and check this out. I forget what's up here. I think you, like, have to destroy his radio so that he can't make more foul mouth comments. Yeah, you can do that. So, nothing really up here for us after we kill him, though. That's all part of the quest when the quest is active, I think. Maybe there's something up on top of this building that I've never checked out. Eh, we'll take this moment here to see. I don't think there's anything I can stand on. Perhaps it's possible to get to the top with a grenade jump. I'm just not so keen on doing that at the moment, I guess. Especially if there's probably nothing up here. I think if there's something up here that I would like, I would have heard about it from somebody. <laughs> I would imagine. I don't know. I'm going to ignore it. Let's go ahead and... So if we save quit here, will it take us back to the fast travel or will it fail the quest? It better not fail the quest. I would be disappointed if it failed the quest. It should just put us by a fast travel. Yes. Perfect. I'll go ahead and buy some ammo real quick as well. Then we'll fast travel over to Captain Scarlet's ship. No, I'm going to use this little skiff platform, actually, that I talked about a moment ago. Just because it's kind of cute, right? We may have to fight some more enemies here as we exit this area because I did do a save quit, meaning they should have respawned. Sometimes I throw my transfusion grenades um, out in front just to see if they will zoom in on any enemies. Gives me an idea of where the enemies might be hiding, and I think it's a good thing. Did he pay us back? He didn't drop ammo. How is he going to pay us back for the ammo we lost if he doesn't drop sniper ammo? He's a liar and a thief. We'll go ahead and teleport out here now into the vehicle. And then we will hopefully run right into this light. Perfect. Really cool quest design here. I like the way they've done this. I like Roscoe to an extent because he's a throwback to an enemy from Borderlands 1, the Rack Hive. But... I'm not so keen on the Leviathan. I feel like the Leviathan, and I mentioned it, why I don't like it. It's because those worms pop out of the ground and they're not like actually the boss, but just his minions. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. 
I guess Roscoe's kind of the same thing here, having the rack, but the rack, they fight you at the same time as fighting Roscoe, whereas the Leviathan just kind of chills out and waits for you to kill sandworms. That's a weird thing. I'm not stoked on that, so, meh. Looks gross with all that hair on his chest. Let's go ahead and throw on a B just to make this a little bit quicker. Alkaline B, grounded B, inflammable is my best. We'll slag him just in case he doesn't have a slag model. And that'll get rid of Roscoe. Perfect. The B in Pimpernel is kind of broken. <laughs> Maybe we got a good greed this time. That might be one of the reasons why I actually have to farm this. So, Bandit Grip um, this time. Getting way too many Bandit Grip Jacob's Pistols in this particular video. So, that is actually dastardly prefixed. So... Best accessory, bad grip. So that that's a bummer, man. We'll have to do this again one day. Um, yikes. That's a bummer. Oh, well. Perhaps there's another place to farm the greed, too, in the community patch. I haven't exactly looked that up yet. But maybe if there's another place to farm for the greed, it might be a little bit quicker than doing the Magnus Lighthouse every single time we want to have one chance at a greed. It's not even a chance at agreed. One guarantee at agreed. But then again, you know, there are however many different accessories there are. And then additionally, there are going to be like eight different grips we can get. So it's a little bit tough to find a Jacob's grip dastardly greed, even though it's a guaranteed drop. Because in order to get the guaranteed drop, you have to go through quite a bit of questing just to get there. All right. So I'm going to try to blow up that uh, one that's in his mouth, just to make this fight a little bit quicker if it'll let me. And then we'll blow up this one that's down here as well. Looks like we've got about half of his health. It's definitely worth wearing the B for this fight, I can tell you that much. Get my health back here with this health gating rifle. Wait for the B shield to recharge there. And then hopefully we'll finish this guy off. Huh. So I wonder where he still has health. It's probably that tongue piece if I had to guess. So the beast shield will eventually recharge. But not in time to actually use it because it will get hit again. Oh my god, I thought I got health back before I got hit by that. That's stupid. Whatever. Plenty of health now. We'll just kill this thing if we can. There must be a spot I can actually shoot him where he will. There we go. Stop that, stupid sandworm. I'm not trying to fight you. Why are you doing this? All right, hopefully he'll stick his tongue out here in a minute for me. Nope, just the sandworm queen. I'm gonna pop right in front of my shot. No biggie. Weird, all those boar noises with B there. That should cause him to actually stick his tongue back out, which I would prefer. There we go. Finally. Okay. So hopefully this time we get what we were looking for, which I don't really know what it was. <laughs> I don't know what we were looking for, to be honest with you. Um... But it's a general loot source, and I was thinking, well, maybe we get an E-Tech sniper, right? So I guess that's what I'm looking for. I don't really know if this area can drop too many E-Tech weapons. It would seem weird if it can't drop E-Tech weapons. I would assume that it can, but they might be kind of rare. We'll go ahead and attempt this grenade jump that I was speaking about, just to see if we can do it a little bit quicker. Uh, it's not too bad. Oh, my 
my bee shield's taking some damage, but not a huge deal. I guess that gets us up here a little bit quicker than if we had some friends who were taking the bridges the whole way up. But, you know, obviously there are even quicker ways to grenade jump, I'd assume, like the bada boom plus sham or however people do those crazy rocket jumps. That is the way to get up here the quickest. Some people recommended that I farm the Becca that way using the rocket jumps to get over to the binary boss. Oh my god, what the hell? But I don't want to do that. I would rather just run Digistruct Feek, to be honest with you. Getting some Pirate's Booty things here. So we got another Legendary. And it is a Neogenator, I think. Yes, it is. Do I already have one of those? I think I already have one of those in the bank. And so we'll have to compare this one to the one that I have in the bank. Because I don't know if this one's better or worse than that. It's another small capacity shield, though. So we did get an E-Tex. So you can get E-Tex from here. This is a extra large splat gun so that's a td or there which i don't need another e-tech here so you can definitely get e-techs here we got two e-tech shotguns this is going to be a bandit variety with a blade i think so not something i need there and then oh my god another e-tech shotgun so if we could have gotten three e-tech snipers this might have been pretty badass but instead we got three e-tech splat guns or whatever which is not good <laughs> if I'm honest with you. I don't know exactly where the um, secret chest is. I think it's this way. We'll find out. It is this way. That's good membrane. Alright, we'll check this out here. Come on. These could have been both been E-Tech snipers and it would have been awesome. But no dice there. So I guess we got a sham, which is pretty cool. Um, but we haven't gotten you know some other stuff that I wanted, which was E-Tech snipers. So... Bummer on that front, but overall, we still did gain a sham shield, which is pretty nice. I was also kind of looking for a Captain Blade's Manly Man shield, which I didn't quite find, but that's the way farming goes sometimes. Sometimes you get real lucky, and sometimes you don't get quite as lucky. So, very cool that the community patch has made the Treasure of the Sands repeatable. I'd imagine that this would be a very, very nice farming run when you're actually leveling up, when you're, you know, accepting a lot of different gear because you know you're not going to be using it for that long. But when you're at max level like I am and you're looking for specific gear because, you know, you've only found a certain selection of items to truly be, you know, viable with your preferred play style and build here, maybe not viable, but the most effective with your build and play style at overpower level 8, you're going to find that you want specific items instead of just general loot items, right? Now, if we were playing Axton, and I think those E-Tech shotguns now get grenade damage, those E-Tech shotguns might have been really awesome for us at overpower level 8 here. And so it will really depend on what character you're playing, what kind of build and style you're going for, that you may or may not find good items in here. But I don't think any specific item is weighted higher in here. It seems like you have a pretty solid chance for a legendary. I only ran this twice and we got a legendary both times. So with such a small sample size, we can't really make any guarantees that we would get a legendary every time. But it seems like it is at least fairly common that you will get one legendary per run there. So that's pretty good. Um, we could run that more times and get some more data on that. But meh. Still, pretty solid run. We were able to get a Sham Shield, which I think I didn't have an Overpower Level 8 Sham Shield beforehand. So, that's cool. The Sham could definitely be good for rocket jumping and stuff like that. Maybe I'll eventually farm a low-level Bada Boom so that we can do rocket jumping, because now I have a Sham for it. That's not something I was originally going to farm for, but now that I have a Sham and it wasn't that hard to find, it seems like it'd be really easy to farm a low-level Bada Boom. And with that in mind, we could definitely do rocket jumps at that point. We've already got a Grog Nozzle, so maybe I'm being too big of a hater on the rocket jumping. I don't know. I am going to check out these buildings here because I haven't really looked through them that much. Ooh, another Cult of the Vault symbol. You can see what I mean when I say I haven't looked through them. <laughs> Only found one of four in this map. I would imagine that I've spent far more time in this map than the average player, and I've only found one vault symbol on this character. Oops. <laughs> it shows that I'm looking more for enemies than random graffiti on walls, to be honest with you. So, farming here didn't didn't exactly get what I was looking for. We'll look for this... Um, wow, dude, nice shot. Uh, we'll look for this stink pot as well. 
Oh well. <laughs> the share of me or dear friend is definitely not strong enough to just kill him like a uh, Pimpernel or stronger Malawan sniper would have. All right, so my dog completely ruined my outro by uh, standing up and pulling up my mic cord. She was sitting under it. And uh, that was unfortunate for me, but I figured, you know, we can redo the outro here with Benny the Booster. Benny the Booster is going to be one of the uh, mutineers from the Just Desserts for Just Deserters quest. Um, you know, that are part of Captain Blade's crew that she knows is mutinying her here. Not just her lieutenants that are up in Magnus Lighthouse that she hasn't yet realized are committing mutiny. So, we'll go ahead and get ready to kill this guy. Um, I took off the lat off while I was killing some stalkers. Doesn't look like he dropped his special Captain Blade or DLC item, though. So, meh. Um, he didn't drop it this time. So, with that in mind, we're probably just going to quit out. Because if we quit out right now... Uh, it'll spawn its way over by the Leviathan, which we don't want to be spawned by. So, with that in mind, um, we did farm a good sham, which is solid. I'm sorry that my dog pulled out my mic at a certain point in time after I killed the Leviathan for the second time, but it did happen. So, anyway, this was the best item we found during this particular run, a 79% sham, which is pretty solid. It's not the best, but, you know, it's another thing to have, so that's a good deal. Overall, we killed quite a few enemies. We killed the uh, pirates a good number of times. A little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to find a manly man shield. We'll have to look for that a little bit later in order to ease our Norfleet farming, which is something that I still want to do prior to farming for another Becca, just in case we get another shield surveyor that's stuck in the wall. As always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that. Otherwise, I hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.